Thanks everybody for tuning in. How's it going? Um, welcome to the new year. Uh, for me, formally uh, inviting you guys, even though you guys didn't have a choice to begin with. What we're doing now is, due to the new year, I want to open up a new series. A series of where I want to be looking over certain cars to the consumer looking to probably buy a car like this. However, I'm not going to tell you about all the features the car has. Um, just because everyone does that. This will be more of a mechanical side review. Uh, new series is going to be called Tech Reviews. Just show you how it's going to go. I'm using my Saturn here as a uh, reference. It's really windy, so if you have any wind noise and stuff interfering, I'm so sorry. But it's also kind of cold. Um, anyways, let's get on with the video. So the car that you see right here in front of you, or half of it, uh, this is the Saturn S series. Uh, they made this car from 1991 or the fall of 1990, all the way up to 2002 before they discontinued it and then they brought in the Saturn Ion to kind of replace it. So this car went through three different types of generations. You have the first generation which went from 91 to 1996. You have the second generation which is the one I'm in now. This is, they made this from 1997 to 1999. Then they had a third generation, which they made in 2000, and they stopped production in 2002. Uh, this car also has three different uh, body styles. Uh, you got the Saturn Level, which is the sedan, Saturn Wagon, which was the wagon, and then Saturn Coupe, which was the three-door coupe. Um, these cars also came with the options of the SL, SWRC, where you got the S-Series 1, S-Series 2. So this car, you could have got it with two engines and two transmission choices. You can get it with either the manual, the five-speed manual, or the four-speed automatic, or you can get it with the single overhead cam or the dual overhead cam engine. The single overhead engine from 91 to 94, they used a different type of engine than the ones from 95 to 02. The first generation was the LK, the LK0 or LKO, which had 85 horsepower and 107 foot-pounds of torque. Then in 95, they kind of revamped it with the fuel. Instead of having it uh, port injected or a throttle body injected up here, they made it port injected. And that went up to 95, or that went up to 100 horsepower with 115 foot pounds of torque. That engine, after the revamp, was known as the L24. This right here is the dual overhead cam engine. Uh, this engine did not get revamped at all through the series or through the years that it was alive. This engine right here has 124 horsepower and 122 foot pounds of torque. Um, this was known as the L LVO motor. Um, this thing right here got 16 valves versus the single overhead cam only has 8 valves. Twice the uh, valves, so I mean you got twice the air coming in, twice the air coming out, which is good for performance. That's why you notice the uh, 24 to 34 uh, horsepower difference or whatever. So when this car came out, this car was a part of General Motors. Uh, it was supposed to compete with the Toyota Corolla and Honda Civic, those Japanese uh, small sedans at the time. They didn't use any GM parts when they made this particular car or any in the series. However, in the later years when the Ion came out and the Saturn V and whatnot, yeah, they started using some GM parts. Um, however, the main goal of this car though was just to bring customers from Honda and Toyota and bring them in into the new GM line of cars. However, one of the big downsides is that most of the people who bought Saturns already owned other GM cars. So yeah, they sold a lot of cars, but they didn't get any new customers. So GM being GM, they liked their anniversaries and special edition type cars. With Saturn, they were absolutely no exception. Um, they made a lot of these cars and for different types of specialties and anniversary edition, but just to name a few. They had the 94 Homecoming, which they only made 3,500 units. The 98 White Hot Coupe, which only made 213 units. The 98 Red Hot Coupe, which only made 657 units. 99 Red Hot Coupe, which made 284 units. 99 Homecoming, uh, they made 4,000 units. The 2001 Limited Edition SC2, which only made 99 units. The 01 10th Anniversary, they made 1,000 units. 01 Bright Ride, they made 664 units, plus the many more Limited Edition cars that they had sold. So Saturns are pretty great and reliable cars, however, they weren't uh, you know, exempt from all the common issues that every car seems to have. Um, every Saturn that you own or that you'll talk to, every single one of them, they'll tell you that they burn oil. No matter what, no matter how many miles, no matter how new or how old, it will burn oil. Uh, if you hear someone talk about a Saturn that's not burning oil, they're lying. A couple solutions that people went to kind of uh, remedy this issue. Um, they soaked the pistons with MMO or GM piston ring cleaner. That typically helped a good bit. Um, but the most common way to peel, you know, remedy this issue is just simply putting oil in it every so often. Every time you get a tank of gas, check your oil level. 
Now they come an issue with diff pins. The diff pins in these things like to uh, literally punch through the transmission casing. Not even joking. They'll come out of the engine or transmission one way or another with brute force. Um, typically to remedy this issue though is to stay on top of the fluid changes, not just oil. Right? If you're maintaining just your oil, then you're not maintaining your car. You're just changing oil. A lot more fluids to go with. I uh, like your transmission fluid. Big thing, don't do any donuts or burnouts. Every time you do a bro burnout or a donut, yeah, that's going to put your dip pin, it's going to put us in, through some stuff. The top uh, fix that people seem to do is just simply weld their dip pin in place. If your dip pin is not free and moving, if you weld it so it doesn't move anywhere, it ain't going nowhere. So, another common issue with this car is with the manual transmission. The uh, shift bushing likes to go out. It's a piece of plastic and it, it likes to crack over time. Uh, especially with how brittle these pieces are and with the fact that these cars are now getting you know, up there 20, 24 years, even 30 years old in some cars. Um, so, ship bushing is something that it absolutely does, it's going to need and something that does happen. A uh, common modification and fix to do to it is putting a metal ship bushing in there instead of a plastic one, so it typically lasts a lot longer. Uh, I actually do have a video, if anyone's interested, you can check it in the description or in the top corner. And I'll put a video on how I did mine, if your car is one of those cars with that issue. Some less common, but common issues this car has, with a single wheel cam engine, you have cracked cylinder heads. With the 2002 uh, single overhead cam motors, you get an intake manifold gasket uh, leak. With the dual overhead cam engine, from 2002, you get an intake manifold leak. Uh, you get a failed engine coolant temp sensor, uh, fine wire ele electrode spark plugs, throttle position center, crank shaft position sensor, Broken coil springs for the 2002 and worn pressure regulators, uh, the release boot valve, and the automatic transmission uh, valve body. Now, with these issues, I would say this car is still a pretty solid car. Some benefits of this car is that the cost of maintenance is really low compared to other cars. Like I have the Jetta, for instance, uh, the cost of maintenance for that's way higher. Old changes are running about ninety some dollars. You can get your oil for about fifteen dollars, and then like an oil filter for a couple bucks more, and you got the same kind of oil change and the same kind of car. And so the engine bay, when you guys notice, there's a lot of space to work around the engine. Even though this car does have the bigger engine in it with the dual uh, overhead cam motor, you still have plenty of room to work around it. So you need to do things behind it, to the front of it, valve cover gasket. You're getting it done in like 20 minutes. Right? Everything is super easy to work on. Uh, I have a video where I was doing the master clutch uh, cylinder, and I got done with that job in like 20, 30 minutes while I was recording. Super easy to get to. If you want to see that video, I'll link that up at the top as well. The thing about this car is that it's just simple. You don't have all these fancy like features. You have what you need. You don't have heated seats. You don't have like 19 different visors. You don't have automatic braking assist. You don't have steering assist, right? You have cruise control for some of them, not all of them. Powered windows, some of them, not all of them. And just one singular powered mirror on the passenger side. I mean, there's not a lot of features in here. However, it gives you all the essentials that you need to just keep driving. You have heat. You have air conditioning. You have a radio. Not a CD player, but a cassette player. Uh, you have a rear defrost. You have cruise control. You have, you know, headlights and intermittent wipers. And just things that work. Not things that are overly complicated that are just gimmicky. Another thing about this car is due to how small it is, it's get, uh, it gets really good gas mileage. Really, really good gas mileage. So if you're driving around the city or driving around a lot, this is a good car to look into. Uh, it's also like a, it's a small car, so it fits anywhere you need to. If you're living in a big city uh, or out in the country, this car will surely fit wherever you put it. Uh, it is four doors, so you can put the whole family in here. Has a nice spacious trunk in it. Um, hood. The engine is kind of nice and small, but it's it's not too tightly packed in there. Like I said, you do have room to work around, but it is small enough to where you could fit this car, parallel park it. You. Uh, put in a parking garage, you can fit anywhere and easy to tow. If you're one of those people who have like a camper and you need like a tow behind the vehicle, this car due to the way it's set up and how light it is, uh, a lot of people you do use these cars for tow behind cars. I'm going to close out this video, I'm going to just show you uh, different owners with uh, mileage, high mileage and even low mileage uh, on their Saturn. These things are pretty reliable cars. You can get these in the high 300s, 400,000 miles effortlessly. If you guys really, really, really did enjoy this video though, you know, let me know and hit the like button. Uh, it really means a lot to me. If you want to see more of these in the future, let me know. I'm actually excited to do a lot of these. Um, I'm going to do a couple more before I figure out if it's something I want to keep doing or not. But, um, 
Yeah, thanks for the support. And Happy New Year's, everybody. 2022 is just a few hours away, but next year, we're gonna have a lot of stuff coming for the channel. Next year is gonna be something really, really exciting. Can't wait to do that one. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one in a week from right, n nope, right, wait, now.